Continuing on with the temperature dependence of entropy, we want to show in this video how the entropy depends on temperature during a constant pressure process. So in the previous video, we showed that the differential of internal energy is going to be TDS, which is equal to the reversible heat, heat in a reversible process, minus PDV, pressure times change in volume, which is the work done in a reversible process. And we derive that for the temperature dependence of entropy during a constant volume process, the partial derivative of S with respect to T was the constant volume heat capacity, CV, divided by T. So using this and the fact that entropy is a state function, we can find the entropy change during any heating or cooling process by the following integral. We just take the integral from T1 to T2 and we have to know the constant volume heat capacity in between that entire range there, divide that by temperature, and then integrate with respect to temperature. And this is of course assuming that there are no phase transitions during uh, this temperature range. We'll get to that later. Okay, so we want to find out how this works for a constant pressure process rather than a constant volume process like we saw here, keeping volume constant. So um, what we saw before is that when we want to look at the heat during a constant volume process, we instead of looking at the internal energy are going to look at the enthalpy. So delta H during a process, during a constant pressure process, is equal to the heat absorbed or released by the system which is done so, done so during a constant pressure process. And this would also be uh, reversible here as well as it was here. Okay, so let's go through a little bit of this math. This follows pretty analogously once we get to a certain step, so I'll get to that point. So enthalpy, H, was defined as internal energy plus pressure times volume. So in order to find the differential of H, dH is just going to be d u plus PV. So if we differentiate all the terms within these parentheses here, we're going to get that dH equals du plus, and then we use the product rule on P dP times V. We are going to have P dV plus V dP. Now, of course, we know that du up from above here was TDS minus PDV. So we're going to have dH equals TDS minus PDV, and then add in the terms that we have in addition, plus PDV plus VDP. Okay, and now you can probably see that we have a cancellation here, minus PDV plus PDV, those both just cancel out and go to zero. So our enthalpy differential here is TDS plus V dP. So you'll notice this is just a difference term in one term here. TDS is the same, but now instead of minus PDV, we have plus V dP. So I said these are going to start uh, coming out of the woodwork here, these type of total differentials here for these different types of energy functions, internal energy, enthalpy, and there will be more on the way. So just take note and pay attention to the differences that pop up when we look at these uh, various quantities here. So if you follow through the analogous equations for enthalpy as we did for internal energy in the previous video, you'll arrive at what is the temperature dependence of entropy during a constant pressure process. So partial derivative of entropy at constant pressure, which comes out of the differential for enthalpy, that is going to equal the constant pressure heat capacity divided by temperature. So at constant volume, it was just the constant volume heat capacity divided by temperature. And at constant pressure, it's the constant pressure heat capacity divided by temperature. So that kind of makes sense. And just to remind ourselves, in case we've forgotten, that the constant pressure heat capacity is the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. Just as the constant volume heat capacity is the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature at constant volume. Okay. 
And then anecdotally as well, from the other part of the total differential for entropy, when you're doing it in terms of enthalpy, from the other part you get the partial derivative of entropy with respect to pressure at constant temperature. And just so I bring that up, that is going to be 1 over temperature times partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to, not temperature, with respect to pressure at constant temperature minus volume. So that's just a little uh, noteworthy part, part as well. The main point is going to be that the constant pressure temperature dependence of entropy is the constant pressure heat capacity divided by temperature. Okay, so just as we had delta S for any heating or cooling process is going to be the integral from an initial temperature to a final temperature of constant volume heat capacity divided by T uh, integrated with respect to T. <clears throat> We're going to have the same integral now during a constant pressure process for the constant pressure heat capacity divided by T. And that's important because most chemical processes occur in constant pressure rather than constant volume. So if we want to write this integral, what if instead of starting at some T1, we have our T1 be 0 Kelvin, absolute 0? Well, if we did that, we would have a function for the temperature dependence of entropy at every temperature above 0 except we wouldn't know what the entropy is at absolute zero. So we'd be able to say that the entropy at a given temperature is going to be the entropy at zero Kelvin plus the integral from zero to T, constant pressure heat capacity at some given temperature, T prime, divided by T prime, integrated with respect to T prime. Note that I use the T prime there because we have T in the limits, so it's bad form to use uh, the same variable inside the function here as you do in the limits, so that's why this T prime is going to be there. Okay, so we have this nice equation there, and if we use this equation, then we get the temperature dependence of entropy. We get the absolute value of entropy at all temperatures above absolute zero. And again, with the caveat that there can't be phase transitions between 0 and T. We'll get to that later as well. But the big question arises, this entropy of 0 Kelvin, what is this? We want to know what the value of the entropy at 0 Kelvin is for different substances. So that's what the third law of thermodynamics is going to tell us. And then once we know the third law, it tells us how to treat this value, and then we have a nice, much more simple form and a nice, some nice easy experimental methods for determining what the entropy is of a substance at any given temperature.